Hi Art One, um, this video is going to show you how to finish your grid drawing. As you can see, I finished my pencil outline and you saw it compared to my photo. Um, be sure that every part of your face is in the correct part of the grid. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and erase the grid. You need to take your time while doing this, trying not to erase any parts of your face. Um, don't worry if it doesn't look just like you. This is probably one of the first times you've drawn a self-portrait using a grid, so I understand if you're not able to get it to look totally accurate. So first step, erase that grid as much as possible. Okay, so I'm gonna go back in with my pencil and add anything that got erased when I was taking away my grid and just kind of darken some of the lines that were not dark enough for me to see. Um, and this next part is where you're going to have to start making some decisions. So you guys are going to get to finish off your self-portrait however you want to. Um, it really just depends on what art materials you have around your house. So. I want you to go ahead and just gather any art making supplies that you have. If you have drawing pens, if you had crayons, if you have markers, if you have glue sticks, construction paper, newspaper, magazines, um, clothing scraps, cloth scraps, whatever you have around your house, just kind of go around and gather whatever you can find and start to think about how you can refine and finish your self portrait to express something about yourself with the materials that you have. So you should have already watched the video about the three self-portraits that I uploaded into Google Classroom for you. And we're really gonna focus on um, talking about Frida Kahlo's self-portrait, the one with her hair cut off where she was dressed in men's clothing. Um, they quoted her in that video as saying that she paints her own reality and she painted her own life. So what I want you guys to be doing while you're finishing up this self-portrait and adding some final touches to it is expressing something about your life and your reality. Um, you can decide to reflect on what we're experiencing right now, um, the whole planet, you know, with the virus, or maybe you want to just do something more personal and um, special to you that doesn't have to relate to the virus and what everyone is going through with the shelter in place. So. Once you have your pile of art supplies, whatever you can find around your house, just start to think about how you can add color or you can add detail or you can add pattern or shading or value to your artwork to express something about yourself or express something about what you're going through right now um, with this crisis and without being able to be in school every day. So I had colored pencils. That was the first thing that I grabbed uh, after I did my black outline with a black marker. And I just decided I was going to go for kind of a semi-realistic addition of color. So based off of the photo, I just used colors that looked similar to what I saw. And I spent the next like 15 or 20 minutes adding color using uh, marker and colored pencil to my self-portrait, just trying to make it look a little bit more like me.
All right, so once I was done adding color to my portrait, I decided I wanted to cut out the background because I wanted to make a new background for my portrait. I had grabbed some construction paper in black and then also some colorful construction paper. And I was thinking about what I wanted to do with that construction paper while I was adding color. So I did not have a plan going into this. Um, I was using the time as I created to come up with a plan. And I decided that I did want to make my self-portrait a reflection of how I've been feeling with this whole shelter in place and having to stay at home and not seeing my family and not seeing my friends and not seeing you guys. So that was what I decided to go for. The black construction paper was the one sitting underneath me the whole time I was working. And I was thinking about using that to create this kind of... Um, black background not black but like I wanted to make these like almost spider web kind of strings kind of showing that feeling of being stuck um being stuck in the house being stuck away from friends and family and I was like okay I'm gonna I think I'm gonna cut these this black paper into these long strips and create an abstract kind of webbed pattern in my background so you guys are gonna see me do that in just a few moments here in the video So I had my black kind of spider web-ish pieces cut out and I decided I didn't want to arrange them in, an, in a spider web pattern. I wanted it to look a little more abstract. So I was just going to go with vertical up and down um, black construction paper lines in my background coming from the top and the bottom of my paper. So I spend the next, you know, 10 or 15 minutes just gluing these on pretty precisely, placing them exactly where I wanted them, spacing them out. So um, it took me a bit of time, but I wanted to make sure that I got the effect that I wanted. So that's what I spend the next few minutes doing. So you'll see that happening. And then I'll let you guys know what my next uh, step in the process was. All right, so I've got my kind of spider web abstract spider webish background going on. Um, and I had said that that kind of represented my feelings of being stuck at home, feeling like I was stuck away from the people I care about. Um, and as I was finishing up that background, I wanted to think about the things I've been doing to help me cope and to help me make, make me feel better about um, the stay at home order. So I was like, I want to incorporate, oh, you guys hear my dog scratching himself. Um, I was like, I want to incorporate some color into this artwork as well. And one thing that I've been doing that's been helping me feel a lot better lately has been creating art and creating videos for you guys and um, working on my lessons 
for my art classes. So I, I thought, okay, I have this top of my head is cut off, which was not intentional. It was because my paper was small that I drew on and I didn't like the way that that looked. So again, everything I'm creating right now, I was kind of just making my plan as I went along. And sometimes we make art that way and that can be really fun. So I was like, maybe I'll have these like bubbles of color coming out of my head to represent um, the art making that I've been doing and the creativity that's been kind of helping me through the tough time that we're going through. So that's the last step that you'll see in this video. So I just wanna review again what your steps are gonna be. Um, first, you're going to erase your grid, then you're going to make sure you finish your pencil outline if anything got erased. And then I want you to go around your house and gather up any art supplies you can get your hands on, like traditional art supplies or non-traditional, right? Magazines, newspapers, cloth that you could cut up, um, colored pencils, crayons, markers, whatever you have. If you have watercolor paint, if you have food coloring and you want to drip that onto your portrait to make splashes of color, um, you can be very creative. I would love to see what you guys can do. So gather that stuff up and then come up with a plan based on what you have, but also thinking about what do you want this portrait to express. Um, I will add my finished portrait at the end of this video so that you guys can see it. And then again, as always, please let me know if you have any questions. You can get a hold of me through email, Google Classroom, or we have our live video chats on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10.30. I'm sorry, that is incorrect, at 11, 11 a.m. All right, I will see you guys then. Bye.